Well, hey guys. A question that comes up every now and then is how to add a volume control to my amplifier. You might have purchased one of these amplifier boards that don't have a volume control or built your own amplifier like this one here. And you want to know how to properly hook up a volume control potentiometer. Well, Hopefully this video will help you out. Often called POT for short, potentiometers come in various shapes and forms. Here's a standard single one with three lugs. This is a linear motion one. It has six connections because there's actually two POTs inside of this one unit. Same with this one. There are two stacked together, and you can see there's six lugs total. This is the same thing, but it's a smaller one for PC board mounting. Potentiometers come in various resistance, and there's two common types. There's the linear type and the logarithmic or audio type. Well, looking down at the potentiometer, from the front, like this one here. You have the three lugs. Inside, there's a resistive material. The ends are connected to the outermost lugs. The center lug is connected to what's called the wiper arm, and this is what moves. Now, this is not exactly what it looks like inside. I'm just simplifying it for explanation. So as you move the wiper arm to different positions on the resistive material, you change the resistance between the center lug and the outer lugs. Here I have disassembled a potentiometer so you can see the internal parts. This is the resistive material. And the center lug connects to this ring. And that ring makes contact with the wiper arm mechanism. This actually fits down inside like this through that hole. And these two metal contacts are in contact with this resistive material which in most cases is a carbon type material. Using the resistance scale on my meter I will check the outer lugs That'll give us the actual resistance. Oops, gotta move my booger hooks out of the way so you can see the screen on the meter. 459K, it's probably about a 500K potentiometer. Now if I measure from one side to about the center, so the center would be right here at the bottom. Let's move that up a bit. Four twenty two. Not a lot of difference. So let me measure the left side to the center. Now it drops to fifty three. Well this is an audio taper or audio log as they call it. It's a logarithmic type of potentiometer. Because as I start here and measure you know, it's only 2 point something K, moved to about 30%, it's 21K, halfway, it's 36. And if it was a 500K, if it was a linear scale, it would be about 250K here, but you see it's not. And as we go 60%, it's really changing. really high. So yeah, that's definitely an audio taper because it's not linear. So why would you want an audio taper rather than a linear taper potentiometer? Well, it's the way our ears perceive loudness. If you use the linear taper, as you started to turn up the volume control, 
the sound would come up very quick and get to a point and then it wouldn't get much louder beyond that. If you use an audio taper, the sound would come up smooth and even throughout the range. So that's why you want to select an audio type potentiometer. Now you need to select the resistance of the potentiometer that you're going to use. Well, to select that, you need to know the input impedance of your amplifier. Most amplifier designs use a biasing resistor on the input. It's external on some designs like the LM1875 or TDA2050. Some chips, it's internal and you don't see it. In which case, you can use the data sheet to find what the value is. You want to select a potentiometer that is half of that or less in resistive value. The reason being is if you don't follow that, you have a voltage divider effect with the potentiometer and the input impedance that causes the volume control action not to work properly. Now you have to hook it up to the amplifier and there is a wrong way of doing it. It's kind of a trap for young players. Well this looks logical but it's the wrong way of doing it. The problem here is you have the wiper arm connected to the input. What happens if you turn it down, you're shorting out the input signal. And that could be damaging to some preamplifiers or music players because you're shorting their output. It can also make the bass sound thin at lower volumes because you're lowering the resistance at lower volumes and it you know, there might be an output capacitance and it acts as a high pass filter situation and it rolls off your base. So this is just bad. It's no good way of doing it. The correct way, and our little guy is really happy now because we hooked it up correctly, the wiper arm is connected to the input of the amplifier. Now your input source does not see the low impedance when you turn the control all the way down. It doesn't vary that much at all so it is less effective to the source. Next you need to know how to hook up the leads. What goes where? Well we already know that the center lug goes to the amplifier's input which is the signal source and which is ground. Normally when you turn it fully counterclockwise the volume is at the lowest position, so as you turn it counterclockwise, it'll hit a stop, and the wiper arm will be at this position. So this has to be ground, and of course this will be your audio source. So that is how you hook up the wires to the lugs. And of course, that's with the potentiometer facing towards you, like this here. So this lug on the right would be ground, amplifier input, and audio source. And one last tidbit I will leave you with. If you build your amplifier in a plastic case or has a non-conductive panel where the volume control is mounted, make sure you take the ground wire and solder it to the case. If you don't do that, and when the amplifier is on and you touch the metal case or you have a control that has a metal knob and you touch the knob you will get a buzz in the speakers because it's picking up electrical noise so very important to ground that well I hope this helps you out with adding a volume control to your audio circuits thanks for watching